It is Friday, and Friday is typically your question. So here we go. What is the hourly pay range? So when you join Military Sealift Command, there is typically uh, different entry-level jobs. There is ordinary seaman, wiper, and steward utility. So steward utility is kind of the one that they slot everybody into when you first get started with Military Sealift Command because it's kind of the hardest gig for them to, to fulfill. And annually, it doesn't pay a lot when you look at it on the surface, but I want to talk to you more in depth about the benefits and features of Military Sealift Command so you kind of get a broader picture and a better understanding of why I think this is a great entry-level position. Even when you look at the, the dollars when you first start, you're like, that's that's trash. So getting started with it, the annual salary guaranteed for Military Sealift Command as a steward utility is $30,026 per year. Now, annually, that's not very much. Let's do the hourly breakdown. That goes as low as $14.43 per hour and overtime rate of $18.83 with a penalty hour of $9.15. So really, you could make as much as $27 an hour if you're working overtime and penalty hours and whatnot. Now, a lot of people are like, that is not that much money, but I want to go through the other entry level jobs and show you how they pay real quick. So Wiper and Ordinary Seaman, their salary, annual salary, is almost $6,000 more. It's $35,937 is their annual salary. Their hourly rate is $17.27 an hour, and their overtime rates end up being $22 an hour with a $9 penalty meal hour. So this is dramatically trash. <laughs> if you look at it, like out in California, they're paying $20 to McDonald's workers right now. The averages of salaries around the country have gone up, but the cost of living is so much more expensive than it's ever been. And I think that's one of the big advantages of military sea lift command is when you join Military Sealift Command, you don't have to worry about paying your rent. Right now, depending on where you live in the country, for a one-bedroom, one-bath, the actual average is between twelve and $1,400 a month. That is really steep. Now, again, that's the national average. I'm sure it goes as low as $800 or $700 or even lower than that if you want to get, you know, somewhere that's maybe less desirable to live. But it could be a lot more too. The national average is twelve to fourteen hundred a month. So when you work with Military Sea Command, you don't have to have an apartment. You can live on board ship. You could, you know, you're gonna stay in the contract hotels. You don't have to worry about having a place to live. So making that money, you have to take into account that you know you're not paying for that. You're not paying for your food, like on board ship, and even when you're in the hotel, they give you a per diem rate, which isn't as much as it probably should be, but nationally, to pay for food a month, you're going to pay three to $400 a month, and that's eating very sparsely. That's like budgeting your meals and eating some ramen and rice and smaller meals. Like, it is expensive to eat right now. I mean, you could spend 30 bucks at a fast food restaurant nowadays, so it is getting hella crazy <laughs> and being with military sea lift command that's a big plus as well and also you don't have to think about your transportation and that was the one thing i did really love about military sea lift command is i lived on the fifth deck down to the main deck get some breakfast and then up a deck and boom i'm in my office it, it was there was no commute there was no transportation i had to worry about in fact in my household because I have a family, we went down to one vehicle at that time. I just had this, the wife had her truck and that was it. That was our family vehicle. And when I got home, we, I drove that as well. So I didn't have to spend money on two vehicles, two sets of insurance and everything else. And, you know, for transportation, you're going to spend two to 500 bucks. And that's if you have a short commute, you know, with your insurance and, and 
everything else, it's crazy on how much everything has been so inflated lately. So, you know, these entry level positions, when you look at the prices that you're earning, it looks pretty darn good. And the one thing I try to express to people when you're thinking about just getting into the merchant marine field is this is not a side hustle. This is something that if you decide to go into, you know, those are all entry level pays. You're going to get out of those positions fairly quick once you get your sea time. And there's a lot of upward mobility with military SELA command and SIU and the merchant marine. So, you know, when you look at those entry level pays, that turns a lot of people off when they first start looking at the merchant marine fields. But once you get your sea time and you start making more money, then the money's good. It's great. It's it's career. It's it's saving in your IRAs, your thrift savings plans. It's investing. It's having a future for yourself afterward. But this is an investment of your time. It's not a side hustle. It's not something... Like the hokey pokey, I got one foot in, I'm going to pull one foot out. It is an investment of your time and your effort. And at times it can be a little stressful because maybe you're on a ship that you don't like, or you're in a location that's far away from home, or you just miss home sometimes. And I know it's it's not an easy gig, but if you invest the time and effort to it, it will pay off multiples. And I got another really great question and I got to get back to it and answer you in the chat below because it was such a lengthy question. But the summary of his question was like, he's starting his maritime journey and he wants to become a pilot uh, at one time, a boat pilot. And that can take up to 10 years to do. And I, I constantly talk to you guys about, you know, setting goals for yourself and think about it as five-year plans. I, I think that if you get into the merchant marine field, you should be thinking about a five-year investment of your time and then reassess. I mean, you can reassess any time through and tap out if it's not what you want to do. But think about investing five years at a time when you get into the merchant marine field because you are going to be away. You have to dedicate a lot of time out on ship to get all that sea time and you can't really have a lot of life. It's hard to have a work-life balance, especially that first five years. So I always tell people, do have a five-year plan and then reevaluate. And if it's still something you want to do, then plan your next five years. So hopefully you guys get some value out of this. Make sure you like, subscribe to the channel. Uh, I want to say thank you for all the new subscribers. A new thing that YouTube just added to my channel was... You can now leave stickers below. So if you guys want to donate a little bit of cash with your questions, and that'll make them stand out because I do get inundated with a lot of questions at times. And it's hard for me to remember to get back to everybody's question as fast as possible. So hopefully you guys have a great day. Great weekend. We will catch you on the next one. Peace.